great stories, Bible stories, stories that are true. They tell of God and His love for us and His power too. The Story of Joseph, Chapter 1. got to get these sheep out to pasture. Coming, Judah. It's just that I saw this one limping and I... Judah, look, here comes Joseph. Our dear younger brother. And in a new coat, too. Father must have been pleased with Joseph to have had such a coat made for him. Good morning, brothers. Are you setting out on a long journey? All the way to Shechem. The grass is good there. You're not coming, are you, Joseph? No, Judah. I'll stay here with Father. That's right. Jacob's favorite son, Judah. It's true, isn't it, Joseph? Last night in my dreams, Judah, I saw all of us in the fields binding sheaves. Mm -hmm. My sheaf stood upright while yours bowed down around it. <laughs> well, favorite son, go back to our father, Jacob. Maybe he will bow down to you. Right now, we have work to do. Joseph did return to his father, and several weeks later, when the brothers had not yet returned from grazing their sheep, Jacob sent Joseph into the country to see how they were. Is that Joseph coming over the ridge? Yeah. The dreamer seems to have come out for a walk. Such a long trip alone can be dangerous. <laughs> Careful, Judah. Father may have sent him. Hello, Joseph. Have you had any good dreams lately? Yes, Judah, I dreamed last night that the sun and moon and 11 stars all bowed down before me. You are growing too big for your coat, younger brother. Perhaps we should make you a new one. What? No, Judah. No, sit down. No, let me go. I think instead that we should kill you, Joseph. Father has many sons. Even though you are his favorite, I'm certain he can oh. find another among us. Oh, oh Judah. There, in the pit. Let us leave Joseph behind in the pit. Huh? Don't stain your hands with his blood. Yes, all right, all right, yes, Reuben. Hurry, Judah. No. Oh. Excellent. Now, let us see who among us should get this handsome coat. Joseph. Joseph. Reuben? Yes. Don't worry. I'm going over the ridge with the sheep now. But I'll be back later to let you out. Later, when the others are gone. Oh, Judah, look over there. Must be a band of merchants on their way to Egypt. Merchants, did you say? Oh, that gives me a wonderful idea. Catch up with them, Simeon, and tell them to come to us. Yes, Judah. Yes, we buy slaves to sell into Egypt. How much for this one here? He's young, quite strong. Mm, we have many like him already. I can give you only 20 pieces of silver for this one. So, Joseph, go along with these men. No, Judah. Uh, 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 20. And you've made a good bargain. He wasn't worth more than 15. And worth nothing to us. Come. Father, it's certain to question us when we return home. We'll tell him that uh, Joseph was killed by wild animals. Joseph. Joseph. Ah, oh, Reuben. <laughs> you won't find Joseph there. He's been taken off our hands by uh, some very uh, generous merchants. Joseph will learn to enjoy being an Egyptian, although perhaps not a favorite. Perhaps now he'll be cured of his dreams. Joseph's brothers, because they were angry that he was their father's favorite son, had sold him to some slave merchants who were traveling into Egypt. Joseph lived as a slave in Egypt for 11 years. But suddenly, one day, he was arrested and put into prison for a crime he did not commit. Soon, however, Joseph and the prison keeper became friends, and Joseph began to help him care for the other new prisoners. Joseph, I... I must see the wise men of the court. It's about my dreams. Surely God, who knows everything, knows about your dreams. 
I am his servant, and if you tell me what you dreamed, it may be that he will show me their true meaning. Well, as you know, I am the butler to Pharaoh. In my dreams, I saw a vine of grapes with three branches. And as I watched it, the buds shot forth and became blossoms, and the blossoms turned into bunches of purple grapes. As I picked them off the vine, I squeezed their juices into Pharaoh's cup and gave it to him to drink. God has let me know the meaning of your dream, butler. The three branches are three days, and within that time, you will be sent back to Pharaoh, who will pardon you and you will serve him as you did before. If my dream comes true, as you said, Joseph, I will not forget you. The butler's dream did come true, as Joseph said. But the butler was so happy to be out of prison that two years passed before he remembered to tell Pharaoh about Joseph. A little wine, sire. I want no wine. I want my wise men. What's taking them so long? Your Majesty, we are, we, we are truly sorry. We have talked, but we can find no meaning in your dream. No meaning? No, sire. No meaning? Fools! I will have you put in prison. Oh, no. Prison! Oh, now find me a man who is truly wise. Prison. Your Majesty, I know of a wise man. A man who told me the meaning of my dreams once. Well, bring him to me at once. Uh, yes, sire, immediately, of course, immediately. I have had the same kind of dream twice. In the first one, I saw seven fat cattle coming out of a river. After them were seven thin cattle. When they got out of the water, the seven thin cattle ate the seven fat ones. Then I saw seven fat and healthy ears of corn and seven dry, spoiled ones. And the seven spoiled ears of corn ate the seven fat ones. God is warning you, Pharaoh. The seven fat cattle and the seven good ears of corn are years of plenty when the people of Egypt shall have all they want to eat. Good, good. Yes, Pharaoh, good. But the seven thin cattle and the seven spoiled ears of corn are years of famine and hunger. No. And unless you save food during the time of plenty, your people and your animals will all die. Hmm. He sounds wise, but seven years of famine? If you will permit me, sire, he is wise. His God told him the meaning of my dream once, that you would free me from prison. And as you know, Pharaoh, it was the truth. Then, Joseph, I could have no finer man to help me govern my people through the famine. Because you are wise and understanding, you shall be governor of all Egypt, second only to me. Joseph's brothers, because they were angry that he was their father's favorite son, had sold him to some slave merchants who were traveling into Egypt. But one day, after Joseph had lived in Egypt for many years, he was asked to tell the meaning of Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh's dreams came true. For seven years, there was more food in Egypt than anyone could eat. But in Canaan, the home of Joseph's brothers, there was little food. The years of famine were beginning. My sons, you must go into Egypt and buy food for us. I hear that they have stored grain and corn and will sell it to those who need it. Certainly, Father. We'll all go at once. Oh, no, Judah, not all. Benjamin shall stay here with me. Since Joseph died, Benjamin has been my main comfort. Poor Father. Does it please you now, Judah, to see what grief you caused Father since you told him Joseph was dead? I have regretted it for 20 years, Reuben. Please let us not speak of That's it now. That's right, Judah. Joseph probably is dead anyway. Enough! Let us go. Your Majesty. Yes, what is it that you wish? My brothers. Your Majesty. 
They don't know me. And they must not find out who I am until I see if they have changed. I shall test them. Your Majesty, you continue to bow before me. What is it that you want? Food, sire, for us and our old father. Father? Is your father still living? Indeed, sire, but he needs food badly. And have you another brother? Yes, the youngest, Benjamin. You lie. You are spies who want to bring war on my country. No, 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 no. Then why is it that your youngest brother did not come with you? He stayed with our father, sire, to care for him while we're gone. Very well. This time. But you cannot live long on the food that you will get. Next time you come, you will bring this brother. And to make sure, one of you, you, will be my prisoner. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, sir. Now go! My servant will prepare your sacks of grain and corn. Thank you, my sir. Thank you. When they pay for their grain, place their money back in their sacks. I will not take it from them. Yes, sire. Something to drink, sire? Yes, my throat is very dry. Do you think they will return, sire? I don't know, butler, but I pray with all my heart that they do. Judah, you know that father will be heartbroken when he hears that Simeon is in prison. Yes. Perhaps we should first make him happy with corn, then later tell him we must return to Egypt for Simeon. Yes, yes, that would be best. Oh, my sons, how good to see you safely return. We have much grain, Father. Tonight we will eat as in the old days. Ah, oh, let me look. But what's this? Why, why, did you not pay for our food? Why, yes, Father, of course. We yes, Father, we did pay. Our... I don't understand how the money got into our sacks. Nor I, Father. Very well, I trust you, my sons. But, but the rulers of Egypt may believe that you stole it from them. You must not return there. But, Father, but, we, I have we spoken. Not. You shall not return. Joseph's brothers, because they were angry that he was their father's favorite son, had sold him to some slave merchants that were traveling into Egypt. But because God was with him, Joseph became a ruler in the Egyptian courts. Then a famine spread throughout the land, and Joseph's brothers traveled from their home in Canaan to Egypt to buy food for themselves and for their father Jacob. Even though many years had passed, Joseph recognized his brothers as they bowed before him. But when he saw that they did not know him, he decided to put them to a test. He had the money which they would have used to buy their grain secretly placed back into their sacks and told them to come again into Egypt, bringing with them Benjamin, their youngest brother. Judah, I do not want Benjamin to go with you. Twenty years ago, Joseph was killed, and the last time you went into Egypt, your brother Simeon was taken prisoner. If Benjamin were taken from me, I, I don't father, know But Father, we need food. Our sheep are dying of hunger, and before long, we too may die. Yes, Father. And the Egyptian ruler gave us his word that Simeon would be released if we returned with Benjamin. Oh, uh, very well. You may go. Oh, thank Father. you. Thank but you, take Father. double the amount of money you had last time and make sure that it does not suddenly once more appear in your sacks. We do not wish the courts of Pharaoh to think that we are thieves. I will pray God for your safety. When Joseph's brothers arrived in Egypt, they were told not to go into the court as they had before, but to see the Egyptian ruler in his home. You may go in. He is expecting you. This must be a plot against us, Judah, for returning home with the money that was to pay for the corn. We must explain. Sire, we did not take the money. We found it in our sacks, sire. Yeah, exactly. We got Such the sack. honesty. We have no idea Brothers, how please, money in your sacks. <laughs> it must have been a gift from God, for I had your money. Well, and shall have again today when you once more buy from my storehouses. But come and dine with me. Simeon! Simeon, are you well? Why, yes, Reuben. And look at the feast that's been prepared for us. And is this the younger brother, 
Benjamin? Yes, sire. The Lord be good to you, my son. Well, thank you, sire. See that they are fed well and give them plenty of corn as before. Return their money to them and place my silver cup in the sack that Benjamin will carry. Very good, sire. It is good to see them once more. They did return for Simeon. But I must have more proof that they have changed. Someone's riding up behind us. It's the servant from the court of Egypt. Stop! <clears throat> One of you has stolen my master's silver cup. We are mistaken. Are None of us would do that. that. Well, let us see. Look, sir. My sack has only grain. And mine, just food, sir. And look, sir, my... Oh, money. What? And, and the cup. Well, just as my master said. master said. Oh, but no, no, wait. I, we, I did not take it. I, I swear. Oh, no, we shall see about that. Come. In the name of my master, you are all under arrest. When Joseph was a young man, he had strange dreams, which meant that one day his 11 brothers would bow down before him. Because of this, his brothers were angry, and they sold him to some slave merchants that were traveling into Egypt. But Joseph's dreams did come true. Many years later, he became a ruler in Egypt, and his brothers, who no longer recognized him, bowed down to him in order that they might get food to eat. Now, Joseph was going to test them to see if they had changed in the 20 years that had gone by. Joseph commanded his servant to place his silver cup in the sack of Benjamin, the youngest brother. Benjamin was then arrested and brought before him. What is this that you have done, Benjamin? Do you steal a silver cup from a man who has given you food? He didn't do it, sir. I asked Benjamin, not you, Judah. Sire, I did not steal your cup. But my servant found it in your sack of grain. How did it get there, Benjamin? We Nobody don't know, sire. Again, brothers, I am questioning only Benjamin. Please, sire. We will take his punishment, place all of us in prison, but let our youngest brother go. Our father would die without him. You would take his punishment? You would not let your younger brother be my slave here in Egypt? That is the last thing that we would ever do, sire. You have changed, Judah. I thank the Lord. You have changed. Sir, do you not see? I am Joseph, your brother. <laughs> Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Oh, forgive me. Do not be afraid, Judah. You are forgiven. It was not you who sent me into Egypt, but God, to be ruler here during the famine. God used me to save our people from death. Yes, the dreams. Judah, remember the dreams that Joseph used to have, that one day we would bow down before him. Oh, yes, they were yes. true. They were true. Of course, the dreams that made us so angry. Truly, they were from God. Brothers, the famine will continue for five more years. Next time you return to me, you must bring our father and all of your wives and children. Egypt shall be your new home. Oh, my sons, it is difficult for an old man like me to believe these things. My Joseph, is he really living? I don't think that you will have to wander much longer, Father. Look. My son. My Joseph. I cannot see. Father. Father. My <laughs> son. It is true. Reuben. Judah. <laughs> it's Joseph. It is, it Joseph. It is. Come, Father, here is your new land. Joseph, it is 
good land. Our sheep will eat well here. And we shall all be together again. Oh, dear God. My heart is too full of happiness to speak. For out of our sorrow has come such joy. May our people praise your name forever. Be sure to watch the next chapter of Great Bible Stories. Chapter 1. Nearly 3,000 years ago, there was no nation greater than Egypt. Its fields were rich with grain. Its treasury bulged with the gold of many countries. Its temple to the sun god rose high among all the buildings and glittered with the brilliance of gold. The cunning and skill of the world's greatest magicians entertained the pharaoh. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, god of his people. And through the giant streets of the cities of Egypt marched Pharaoh's armies, the most powerful of all armies. And under the whip of Pharaoh, roads and cities were built. Under the whip of Pharaoh, slaves worked long days in the hot sun. Pharaoh had commanded there would be no nation as beautiful and powerful as Egypt. And he said no one would be greater than Pharaoh. But the people of Israel who lived in Egypt did not believe Pharaoh was their God. And Pharaoh demanded the people of Israel work until they were near death. Who were the people of Israel, called Israelites? They were the people of God, the God who made the earth and the sky and all men. They were the descendants of the man Joseph, whom God had sent into Egypt many years before. Joseph was an Israelite who found favor with another Pharaoh. But in our story, Joseph's people did not please the new Pharaoh. So he made slaves of them all, except one, Moses, an Israelite, living in the courts of Pharaoh as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But why? Many years before Moses grew to be a man, Pharaoh became concerned that the people of Israel would soon number so greatly they would rise up and cause trouble, perhaps kill his soldiers and attack the palace. No. No. That will not happen in my land. The Israelites will never grow that strong. What will you do, sire? Tell all the people of Egypt to kill every son that is born to the Israelites. Ah, yes. Kill every one. So the children of Israel suffered even more. The women wept, and all the families of the people of Israel were sad. Oh, God, 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 why must our people suffer? Doesn't he hear the crying of our women? Doesn't he hear the silence of our dead sons? They will come for our baby soon. They will not kill the child. I promise you, even if I must die myself. Oh, there is nothing we can do. Nothing. If they do not come for him until tomorrow morning, I think... At least there is hope the child will not die. Now... What are you saying? We will work through the night. Come, quickly. It is finished. Will you put the baby in that? Would you rather have the child killed with an Egyptian sword? The basket is strong. The tar will keep it from sinking. We shall place him in the basket and let it float down the river and hope that someone may find him and keep him safe. Where's your son? There is no son here. He's gone. Gone. Away. No harm would come to the tiny baby in the basket. 
For the Lord God of Israel would one day choose him to be his servant. His name would be Moses. Three thousand years ago, the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, commanded that all the newborn sons of the Israelites be killed. But the mother and father of one of the Israelite baby boys placed their son in a basket in the Nile River and let it float downstream. It floated by the palace of Pharaoh, near where the Pharaoh's daughter was swimming. <laughs> oh, princess, look, a basket. Should I fetch it? All right. There may be some treasure hidden inside. <laughs> Let me open it, Kona. Oh, it moved. Careful, princess. A baby. What a lovely boy. He's an Israelite. I will ask my father if I may keep him. Oh, but your father wants all their boy babies killed. I will ask him anyway. Certainly one little Israelite boy can't make any difference. All right. If he really pleases you that much, you shall have him. And he shall be as your son. Are you happy? Oh, yes, father. Thank you. The princess named the child Moses. As Moses grew older, he learned that he was an Israelite. His heart was filled with rage when he saw his own people suffering under the whip of Pharaoh. Ah, you are a fool, Moses. You think you've helped us? Now the Egyptians will make us work all the harder. Yes, and you. See what Pharaoh says now, Moses. He'll throw you out of the palace. You won't be safe anywhere. That's right, Moses. Run. Run away. But far away on the slopes of Mount Sinai, Moses found safety. He did not live in a palace, but under the sky. He grew older and cared for sheep. And in the long hours of the day and night, he thought of his people suffering in Egypt. <laughs> Moses? Who is it? Who are you? Moses? This cannot be. The bush speaks. It is I, the Lord God of Israel. God. Moses, do not come nearer. I have heard the cries of my people. I have seen their suffering in the land of Egypt. Moses, my people shall be free. They will no longer feel the sting of the whip. They shall come out of Egypt and I will lead them to a new land. That is good. And you shall lead them for me. Oh, no. I am not the man to lead them. Tell them the Lord God of their fathers has sent you. But I've lived away from the people so long, and I, I, I can hardly speak. I take care of sheep in the hills. I see no one. Moses, I, I will be with you. I will teach you what to say. And your brother Aaron will help you. Please, Lord, send someone else. You are the one. You are the man. You will serve me and my people. You will tell Pharaoh to let my people go from Egypt. Lord. Pharaoh will say no to you again and again. But his power is not greater than heaven's. I will send my power with you. Such power as Pharaoh has never seen. Now rise and go. Go to Egypt. Yes, Lord. I will go. Three thousand years ago, the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to free the Israelites. But Pharaoh said, I will not let your people go. I will not listen to your... God, I do not even know him. The Lord God of Israel commands you, let his people leave Egypt, or he will send swarms of flies to cover all the land. <laughs> this he cannot do. You will see. Magicians. Magicians! How can Moses do this trick? It is not Moses, sire. It must be his God. Take them away. 
Please, take the flies away, and I will let your people leave Egypt. I swear it. When will you let the people of Israel go? Are the flies gone? All gone, magician? Yes, sire. There is not one to be seen. Not one. Well, then there's no reason to let the slaves go, is there? You promised, Pharaoh. I am a living god. I do what best suits my nation and myself. I change my mind as I will, and I say the people of your god will not leave. Now, get out. Get out before I... You and your nation will suffer for this, Pharaoh. Get out. The Lord will free his people. Why is it growing dark? There are no clouds in the sky. But the sun is being, being hidden. Magicians, wise men of the stars. Your Majesty. Surely you've seen. Why is the sun being darkened? We do not know, Shire. It seems as though a great hand is hiding its light. There are you. Have you and your God done this to Egypt? Egypt will be dark, black dark, until you free the people of Israel. I will not free them. Re is the sun god of Egypt. He will not allow your god to stop his eternal light. The great god of light, mighty Re, let your light again shine on Egypt. Certainly the god of Moses cannot defeat you. Re, bring light. We cannot live without the sun. Light will not come again until you set the people of Israel free. Let them leave Egypt now. Yes. Now. Let them leave. I have seen the power of your God. I will free your people. Pharaoh. Don't worry, Moses. I will not go back on my word. The Israelites are free. Only take away this plague of darkness. The God of Israel will send the light. It's true, Aaron. I go now to tell the people. Moses! Yes? You will not tell the Israelites they are free to leave Egypt. But Pharaoh has changed his mind. But he... He has changed his mind. He... He has commanded the people of Israel to remain as slaves. Do not speak to them of freedom or they will suffer even more under this. Oh, God, when, when will you keep your promise? Lord, do not let your people suffer more pain. I have heard the cries of my people and I will free them from their slavery. And I will lead them to a new land that is good. Three thousand years ago, the people of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt. God commanded Moses to tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let his people go free. Pharaoh would not free the Israelites. But God told Moses of his plan to change the Pharaoh's mind. Moses, wait! Where are you going? God will strike Egypt tonight with death. What? Tonight, the firstborn child in every Egyptian house will die. Moses. Tell the father of each Israelite household to take the blood of a lamb and paint the doorpost. So that when the angel of death sees the blood, he will know it is the house of one of God's people and will pass over the house and not bring death. What about Pharaoh? I warned him, Aaron. I told him to free our people or death would come to Egypt. But he would not listen. He would not free us. Hurry. Hurry. The angel of death may be here soon. Even my own son, Moses. My own son is dead. I am sorry, Pharaoh. But you refuse to free God's people. Yes, I know, I know. I am to blame. Moses, I am powerless before your God. And now, before he strikes Egypt again, I will free you. You and all the people of your God be gone from Egypt by sunrise. Leave me. Leave me. Moses 
and the people made their camp by a sea. I let them leave. I should have killed every one of them. Well, there is still time, sire. Prepare all my armies. The fastest chariots. I will catch them. Well, yes, sire. Yes, sire. Follow me. Now. Forward. Moses, listen. Pharaoh's army. Why did you bring us out here to die, Moses? We could have died in Egypt. God will not let you die. He has surrounded our camp with a great cloud so Pharaoh cannot see us. We will be safe here tonight. Pharaoh will not enter the cloud. And in the morning, God will show us what to do. Trust him. Trust him. They're coming, Moses. It's true, Moses. I know, Aaron. What are we going to do? Everyone, ready to march? Ready to march. Come, all of you. Come to the sea. And now, oh God, show us your power. years ago, God freed the people of Israel from the land of Egypt, where they had lived as slaves of the king Pharaoh. God chose a man named Moses to lead the Israelites from Egypt to the land God had promised to give them. But the promised land was far away. Do you think we can stop here, Moses? It's a good land for grazing our cattle. I know. I have grazed sheep here. Then we will stop. Stop. You see the mountain peak up ahead? It's beautiful, but there at the foot of Mount Sinai, we shall make camp. The Lord has called us there. The Lord first called Moses to come high on the mountainside alone. This was where God had spoken to Moses before, from the burning bush. And now God would speak to him again. Moses, you have seen how I have cared for the people how I have brought them here to myself. Moses, I will now tell them what it means to be my people. Tell them I have chosen them to be my own, and they shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And as my people, they shall obey my commandments and laws. I will tell them, Lord. The time has come for the people and God to make a promise. Oh, what kind of a promise? To belong to each other forever. How can this be done? Uh, what will the Lord do, Moses? The Lord himself is coming to stand before us in a cloud of fire and smoke. He will tell us his commandments, his laws, so that we may know exactly how we are to serve him. And what are we to do? We must prepare for his coming. And when the trumpet of the Lord blows, all of us will walk up the side of the mountain to hear our God. Hear our God. Go now. Tell the people. Then, after three days... Listen. Look at Mount Sinai. Oh, it must be our God. It is God. He is calling us to the mountain.
God called Moses and Aaron to climb on a little higher. There, the Lord spoke his great commandment. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. One after another, the Lord gave the rules he wanted his people to follow. Rules that showed the people they were to love God and serve him. And they were to love and serve their neighbors. When Moses came down from the mountain, he told the people everything the Lord had said. And the people promised they would do all the Lord commanded. And after the people promised to serve the Lord, Moses led them to the new land the Lord had promised them, where they would become a great nation, God's nation. Watch the next chapter of Great Bible Stories. seeing King Saul's men march through Bethlehem, especially when they've just won a battle. They look tired. The Amalekites were a strong enemy. But where is the king? He hasn't passed by yet. It is said that the prophet Samuel is angry with King Saul. Perhaps Saul no longer leads the army of Israel. Don't be stupid, Joab. Of course he leads the host. Saul is God's anointed. Whatever that means. Quiet. Someone will hear you. Look. There's Abner, Saul's captain. That's what I'm going to be someday. Of course. You'll head the host just the way I will be king of Israel. But don't choke. I'll bet you could be king someday, if you wouldn't waste so much time singing to your sheep. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, Joab. I must tend the flocks tonight. Samuel is coming to our house for a feast. Wait! The king! Blessings upon God's chosen one. Now, truly, I must go. Did you say the prophet Samuel is coming to your house tonight? Yes, for a sacrifice. Huh, that's strange. Well, whatever it is, I won't be there to see it. Someone must look after the flocks. God be with you, Joab. Yes, uh, and with you, David. Greetings, Eliab. Why does Samuel want me? Well, how should I know? He's been acting very strange tonight. Father had each one of us pass before him after the sacrifice. And as each did, Samuel would say, this is not the one, or, or the Lord has not chosen him. To each one of us he did this. And now he calls for you. But the sheep? Oh, I will care for them. Now run. You call for me? Yeah, this is the chosen one. David, you know that King Saul has lost favor with the Lord God, but that he is still the king of all Israel. 
Yes, Samuel, I watched him march through Bethlehem today. Good. You should watch Saul very closely, my son, for one day King Saul must die. No. As any man must die, David, and then Israel shall need a new leader. Saul has a son, Jonathan. No, not Jonathan. God has already chosen someone else. Samuel? Is it? Yes, my son. God has chosen you. But why me? Why not my brothers? They're certainly bigger than I The and... ways of the Lord are strange, David, but we must not question them. We obey them. I now anoint you, David, son of Jesse, the next king of all Israel after Saul. May the Spirit of God be with you always. Saul had been a mighty king of Israel when the Spirit of the Lord was with him. But one day, Saul angered the Lord God by disobeying him. So the Spirit of the Lord left Saul and went instead to the shepherd boy David, who was then anointed by the prophet Samuel to be king of Israel after Saul's death. No one in Israel, not even Saul, knew that someday David would be king. For as long as Saul was alive, the people were to serve him and obey his commands. David, David, come here. What is it, Father? A messenger from King Saul is inside. You are to return to Saul's camp with him. But why, Father? David, King Saul would have you play your harp for him. His mind is troubled, and it is said that your songs may bring him peace. But I play only for my sheep. And Saul is like a sheep since the Spirit of God left him. He needs strength for the war against the Philistines. You will go, my son. God be with you. What is that shouting? It is the Philistine giant, Goliath. Such a fierce warrior Israel has never seen. For 40 days, he shouted for an Israelite soldier to fight with him, but there was no one who would do it. But surely the Lord is on our side and would slay this giant? Try to tell our soldiers that. Come, I will lead you to King Saul. David of Bethlehem, sire. David. You are a handsome lad. They tell me you play the harp. That I do, sire. But... But what? Will you not play? I would rather slay the Philistine giant first, sire. <laughs> do you hear that, Abner? Sire? This youngster, who is no older than my son Jonathan there, would kill a giant. <laughs> Please, sire. The Lord God will do it. The Lord God is no longer with us. He is always with Israel, my lord. Very well, then. Jonathan, go with him and bring me word when it is over. <laughs> Good luck, David. Am I a dog that an Israelite boy would come at me with storms? <laughs> I will show you, Goliath, that the Lord God of Israel can win in battle even without a sword and shield. Curse your God! You shall die! <laughs> Lord, be victorious! <laughs> See now if you can sing as well as you can fight. My father is pleased. He will want you to stay with us, David. But Jonathan, I must return to my sheep. Someone else shall have to care for them now. You did well with your sling, but I want you to have this. Your sword? Yes. It means that we shall always be friends. As brothers. May it protect you well, David.
Saul, king of Israel, had been greatly troubled. Not only was his army at war with the Philistines, but the prophet Samuel had told Saul that God no longer wanted him to be king. Saul did not know that the one God had chosen to be Israel's new king was the shepherd boy, David. David, the boy who had killed the Philistine giant, Goliath. The boy who had sworn friendship with Saul's own son, Jonathan. And the boy who was now head of part of Israel's army. Look at him over there, Abner. He's a fine lad. David does fight well, sire. It is good to know that when I die and my son, Jonathan, becomes king of Israel, David will be at his side. Yes, sire. All of Israel has heard of his bravery, especially against the giant Goliath. It is spoken of often. Along with my own victories, of course, Abner. And yours? Well, sire, I believe that... Well, we are growing old, you and I. It is right that the people trust most in the strength of the young. More than they trust in me? They love David more than they love their king? <laughs> Here is your answer, sire. Listen. say that David has done better in battle than I. But it is true, sire. No matter. I am king. <laughs> May the Lord do so to me and more also, Abner, if I do not put a stop to such nonsense with this herder of sheep. Where is he? I heard that you were troubled, my lord. May I put your mind at rest with some music? Yes, David. Having you here would put my mind at rest. Why don't you sing, David? What would you have me sing, my lord? Perhaps that new song I heard this afternoon about me slaying 1,000 men and you slaying 10,000. My lord? Sing, David. Sing it. Saul has slain his thousands. Why do you stop? The best part is yet to come. And David is... David is... Enough! David, what is it? Where are you going? Your father tried to kill me, Jonathan. I must go quickly. Father, I don't believe it. Please, David, I know my father's anger. He will be over it soon enough. I will speak to him for you. He knows we are like brothers, Jonathan. He would never tell you of his hatred for me. Please let me try. Hide in the fields tonight, and I shall come to you tomorrow with word. God be with you, my brother. And may he smile upon you, David. Saul was king of Israel, but the spirit of the Lord was no longer with him. Instead, it was with David, the shepherd boy whom Saul had made captain in his army after he had seen him kill the giant Goliath. Because David was so loved by the people, Saul became jealous and he tried to kill David. But Saul's son, Jonathan, had sworn to be friends with David forever. And Jonathan left his father's palace and went to see David in his hiding place. David? Here, Jonathan. Oh. I wasn't sure that you would come. It wasn't easy to slip out of the palace without being seen. I haven't long. Quickly, then. Come and rest while I tell you of my plan. You know that you may count on me to help you. Good. Saul is certain to miss me at the feast tonight. I want you to tell him that I have returned to my father's house in Bethlehem. If Saul speaks well of me, then we shall know that all is forgiven between us. But if he is angry, it means that he will again try to take my life. I shall go right away. Yes, my brother, it is not safe for you here. When I return, I will pretend to have come for practice with my bows and arrows. When my servant runs to fetch the arrows I have shot, I will be secretly signaling to you. 
If I say to him, the arrow is close by, that means that Saul still loves you, and you may return in peace. I pray that that is true, but if I say, hurry on, the arrow is still further off, it means that you must run for your life. I understand. Now, go. Where is David tonight? At home with his father in Bethlehem. Then why did they not ask my permission to go? Oh, he thought that you were angry with him, father. Oh? Then he told you all this? Yes. We love one another like brothers, father. We share everything. Share everything, do you? Even the kingdom? My loving son. Do you not realize that David is trying to take the kingdom away from you? The kingdom that you should get when I die? Only God can make a man a king, Father. And besides, David loves me. And you, what has he done? Uh, Father! You are quick, my son. I would not kill you, but I would scare you into seeing the truth. Go to your room now and consider what I have said. Stay back, lad, till I have shot. Now, go and fetch my arrow. Go further, lad. That arrow is beyond you. Go quickly. You have sharp eyes. You shall come again with me someday. But go now. I've strained my arm and would rest a moment before going back. David. I understand. I shall miss you greatly, David. Weep not, Jonathan. We shall meet again. We can make war against my father. Only if I have to, to save my own life. You know that I would serve Saul as long as he is king in Israel. Go in peace, my brother. May God watch over us while we are apart. When Saul was king of Israel, he angered the Lord God by disobeying him. So the Lord sent his spirit to be with David, a shepherd boy. And because God was with him, David was able to kill the mighty Philistine giant Goliath. And the people loved him for his bravery. King Saul knew that the people loved David more than they did him. And he swore to have David killed by his warriors. But David fled into the mountains with his own band of men. And although Saul searched for many months, he could not find him. Abner, I'm weary. It seems that we shall never find this shepherd boy who hates me. Who hates whom, your majesty? Insolent dog. I will have you whipped. Oh. Very well. I hate him. Wouldn't you if he tried to take your place in the kingdom? Ah, the Lord seems to favor David. As he did me. And shall again when David is gone. But come. I shall rest. Keep watch. Now's your chance, David. Saul and his men sleep soundly. Very well. Softly. There he is. And old Abner as well. Let me kill them before they wake up. No. God chose Saul to be king. You shall not touch him. But it is also said you are chosen by God. Who then should we serve? You should serve Saul, for the Lord chose him first. But serve him as I do, Abishai. My time to be king will come. <laughs> now, hurry. Take that jug of water. I'll take this. Now, quickly. Oh. Hurry. What kind of joke do you play on me, Nathan? I don't pretend to be asleep. I know no one but you would throw water in my face. Mm -hmm. What is it? 
Didn't you throw water in my face? No, go back to sleep. You're dreaming. If not you. Who's there? There's someone out there. Men. Everyone. Uh, Get off. We're being attacked. We're going to be everyone here. Abner. Abner. Why do you not watch over the Lord's chosen one? Someone may try to kill him in his sleep. No one but you would dare to do that, David. Then how is it I got this, my king? My spear. But why did you not kill me, David? Why did you take only my spear? If you will look about you, Saul, you will see that I also took your jug of water. But why? Because I could never kill the one that God has chosen. I did not make war on you, Saul. You made war on me. What evil have I done? You, you win the people away from me. Because they see how I kill your enemies. You, you win the love of my son, Jonathan. Because we are like brothers with one father, Saul. You. David. My son. Peace be upon you, King Saul. Now that we meet at last, David. Peace is upon me. The Lord bless you, my son. For one day, you shall be great. Chapter 1. Stop that man! Yeah, what man? That man, you idiot! If you don't stop him before he gets to the king, you'll spend a month in prison! Uh, God, God, stop that man! Uh, that man? Yes, that man! Come back. You can't come in here. The king will have us all thrown into prison. How dare you disturb the king? God has sent me to see you, King Ahab. Who? Who has sent you? God. The God of Moses, King Ahab. God sent a beggar like you to see me. <laughs> I don't believe you. Believe this, Ahab. The Lord. God of Israel has seen all the evil you have done. He knows you have led his people away from him. Silence. The Lord knows you do not love him or serve him. The Lord knows you are the most wicked king Israel has ever had. Silence that man. Hear this, Ahab. I speak for the God of Israel. And God says there shall be neither dew nor rain these years. And rain will not come again until I say it will. What? No rain, Ahab. No rain. All because you turned against God. No rain. No rain. No rain. Elijah left the king's court. And several days later, King Ahab called his servant Obadiah. Obadiah! Obadiah! Where is that man? Your Majesty. Where have you been? I'm sorry if I've displeased the king. I, I was only... Never mind, never mind. Obadiah, what have you learned of the man Elijah? Why, uh, your soldiers have searched for him, Your Majesty, but no one has seen him or even heard of him. What kind of soldiers do I have in my kingdom? They can't even find one lone man. Is he a magician who can vanish into thin air? The prophets seem to hide well. Prophet? Do you really think Elijah is a prophet? Sire, there can be no doubt that he's a prophet, for he spoke the message of God. Oh, it's ridiculous. No rain. No rain, he said. How can you believe that? And yet it hasn't rained since he spoke to you. No. 
No, it hasn't. And rain will not come until Elijah says it will. If what he said is true, that means Israel will be dry as dust. God has spoken through his prophet. Prophet, prophet, prophet. Obadiah, your prophet must be found. Have all my soldiers alerted to renew the search for this man? The prophet Elijah had gone to a place the Lord had chosen for him, to the brook Kirith, west of the river Jordan. It was there God sent the ravens to feed him. Hello there, my little friend. What have you brought me this morning? Ah, some meat. Very good. Thank you. Oh, your friend, there's something too. All right, little bird, what have you brought? Bread. Well, thank you. Here, you shall join me in my breakfast, ravens. Ah, so quickly you eat. Of course, you want to get back to your nests. All right, fly away, and I'll see you tonight. Oh, God, it is peaceful here. But the wind is hot, and there is not one cloud in the sky. Lord, I pray for strength that I may help your people. I will follow you, Lord, no matter what the danger, for I know your power is with me. God had sent Elijah the prophet to tell King Ahab that rain would not come to the land of Israel because King Ahab was so wicked and because he had led the people of Israel away from God. Even though there were many people in the kingdom who didn't love and obey God anymore, there were still some who loved him. Such were a boy and his widowed mother in the village of Zarephath. <coughs> Enon, do you think it'll ever rain again? I don't know. It's, it's been so long. Look, Enon, our tree is dying. It's so dry. Mother, why are you crying? Zadok, I, I didn't know you were nearby. But why are you crying? I'm all right now. See, the tears are gone. But... Oh, please, it's all right. You go out and play again, and, and I'll cook something for our supper and call you when it's ready. I'll be right outside. Oh, God, how can I tell him? How can I tell him there is so little food left? How can I tell him that we're going to die? To this widow's house, God would send Elijah. God told Elijah to leave the brook Kirith and travel to the village of Zarephath, where he would find the widow. God told Elijah he had commanded the widow to feed him. There's one, Zadok, over there. Will we need much more, Mother? No. It won't take much of a fire to cook what little food we have. Mother, look. That man. He's a stranger here. A stranger? He could be God's stranger, Zadok. What? God's stranger. He may be the one that God is sending to our house. But, Mother, you didn't tell me someone was coming to our house. Shh. I'll tell you later. You are Joanna. Yes, and this is my son, Zadok. You, you are... I am Elijah. You are most welcome to come and stay in our home, Elijah. Even as the Lord God has said. May I take your staff and put it away for you? Why, yes. Thank you, Zadok. May I have a drink of water, Joanna? Of course. And would you bring me a little bread? Bread? Elijah, I have no bread. And look, I have only a handful of flour and, and a little cooking oil. Well, that's all we have. And when that is gone, Elijah, as you were coming today, my son and I were gathering sticks to build a fire so that we could make our last bit of bread. And then, and then we... We were going to wait for death. <laughs> God told me to feed you, Elijah, but I cannot. There's nothing to eat. Nothing. Listen to me, Joanna. 
Listen to me. Do not be afraid, Joanna. God said that this jar of flour will not run out, and this jar of oil for baking will not empty until the day the Lord sends rain to his earth. Not empty? Can it be true? The Lord has spoken, Joanna. So prepare food for me, and then prepare some for yourself. Zadok! Zadok! Bring the wood for the fire. We're going to eat now. After Elijah had told wicked King Ahab that rain would not come to the land of Israel until God said it would, God sent Elijah to the village of Zarephath, where the king couldn't find him. Elijah stayed in the home of the widow of Zarephath and her son Zadok for three years. One day, while Elijah was praying by the great sea, Joanna was busy with her housework. Zadok! I, I don't know what, what's the matter with me, Mother. Zadok! Oh, Zadok, here, let me help you to your room. Zadok, please speak to me. Mother, Mother, I... Zadok, can you hear me? You cannot die. You cannot leave me. <laughs> Elijah, I must find Elijah. Elijah, Elijah, where are you? Here, Joanna, here I am. <clears throat> What's the matter, Joanna? Oh, why did you come to my house, Elijah? To hurt me? What are you saying? Sadok is dead. Are you certain, Joanna? Oh, yes, he's dead. Did you do this to me, man of God? I did not come to your home to bring death, Joanna. Come, we'll go back to the house. You see, he's dead. What are you doing, Elijah? I'm taking the boy up to my room. You stay here. But Elijah... Stay here, Joanna, and pray. Lord, my God, there is so much suffering and death in your land. Your people suffer because they have so little to eat and to drink. The king's soldiers search for me because they blame me for stopping the rain in Israel. Then you led me to the widow's house. She alone has been kind to me. She has fed me, given me a place to live. Must she now suffer, O oh God? Must her house know the pain of death? Lord, let this child's life return to him again. Lord, let this child's life return to him again. Lord, let this child's life return to him again. Elijah? Please, what's happening? Zadok is all right. He's all right, Joanna. He's... Elijah? Come, see for yourself. Oh, Elijah, I'm sorry I blamed you. And I know now that you are a man of God. And, and I thank you. Thank God, Joanna. Oh, yes. I thank God. All my life. I will thank him. God had sent Elijah the prophet to tell King Ahab that rain would not come to the land of Israel because King Ahab was so wicked and because he had led the people of Israel away from God. But after three long years without rain, God told Elijah to return to Samaria and tell King Ahab that rain would again come to Israel. But before Elijah said a word, King Ahab spoke. I should have your head, prophet of God. Did you see what you have done to Israel? 
It is dry as dust. You have destroyed Israel. No, King Ahab, not I. It is you who have brought this to Israel. Would I destroy my own country? You, King, have turned your back on God. You have worshipped the false god Baal, and you led the people to follow him. How dare you speak of Baal? Do you want rain, Ahab? Do you want rain? I... Yes, I want rain. Then you will trust the living God of Israel. This is what he wants you to do. Bring all the people of Israel to Mount Carmel and gather there all 450 prophets of Baal. Then you will see who is God of Israel. Baal or the God for whom I speak. People of Israel, today you will see who is the only God of Israel. Today you will see for yourselves, Baal is helpless. I have asked the prophets of Baal to build an altar and place a sacrifice upon it. I ask them now to pray to their God, Baal, and ask him to send fire from heaven to burn up their altar. What do you say? That will be easy, Your Majesty. Baal will not be outdone by Elijah's God. Then bring fire. Uh, yes, sire. All you prophets of Baal, uh, march around the altar and pray to Baal to send fire. Send fire! Hours went by, but no fire from Baal. You prophets of Baal had better cry louder to your God. Perhaps he is sleeping or out for a walk. Call Baal. Call him. Baal, hear us. Send fire, send fire, Baal. Stop. It's no use. Baal won't send fire. It's Elijah's turn. Let us see if the God of Elijah will send fire. My altar is ready to burn. But first, pour water on it. All over it. Yes, pour water on the altar of the Lord. More. More water. Do it again. Now we will see what the Lord God can do. Oh, Lord, let these people know this day you are the only God in Israel, not Baal. And let them see that I am thy servant. Let them see, Lord. Let them see. God did not send rain to the land of Israel for three years because King Ahab had led the people to follow the false god Baal. The true God of Israel finally told Elijah, his messenger, that rain would again come to Israel, but first there would be a contest. The prophets of the false god Baal had asked Baal to send fire to burn up their special sacrifice, but no fire came. Baal was powerless. There was no Baal. But when Elijah prayed to his God to send fire, God showed his power. King Ahab said to Elijah, Elijah, I have been wrong. There is no doubt your God is the God of Israel. And the people, they know it too. This is what you wanted, Elijah. This is what God wanted, Ahab. Yes, of course. What God wanted. The people will serve him now. But, but what about rain? Will God send rain to Israel now? I do not know when the rain will come, Ahab. But God told me that rain will come. But it could be months before it comes, Elijah. No, Ahab. Even though there is not one cloud in the sky now, God has forgiven his people. And he will send rain soon. Soon? Yes. I will go now to the top of Mount Carmel to watch for it. It will come from over the great sea. Let me come and watch with you. No. 
No, you go rest. I will tell you when the rain is near. Well, then let me send a servant boy with you. He can bring me your message. As you wish. Ahaz, I want you to climb the mountain a little further and see if there are any clouds in the sky. All right, Elijah. I will. Oh, Lord God. Your people have suffered and many have died because they disobeyed you and would not listen to your voice. But now they are sorry. They want to follow only you. And now, Lord, we wait for the rain you promised. <sighs> Elijah! I must tell Elijah! Ahaz, be careful! You'll hurt yourself! Careful, careful! Oh, look at your legs. But it doesn't matter, honest, be because I saw them, I saw them. Well, what did you see? Clouds, Elijah, clouds. Ahaz, quickly, you must go to King Ahab. Tell him, tell him the rain is coming. Are you sure, Elijah? I'm sure, Ahaz, very sure. Hurry, Ahaz. Run as fast as you can. Tell the king, tell the king to prepare his chariot and return to the palace immediately. For so much rain will come, the roads will be washed away. Hurry, hurry. Lord God, great God of Israel. I am sorry your people turned away from you, Lord. I am sorry your land and your people had to suffer. But I know you punished them because you love them, even as I do. And now you show your love again by sending the rain and your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. sure to watch the next chapter of Great Bible Stories. Jeremiah, chapter 1. No, Jeremiah, don't go. Barak, my dear friend, you know that I must. I love my people. I must warn them. But not today. It's a feast day. Everyone will be at the temple, including the priests who hate you. Who knows what they might do? But the Lord God told me to preach in the temple, to say to the people that they will be punished for pretending to trust him when it is really their own lies in which they trust. Then let me warn them. You see, I have written down all of the things which you have told me. Let me read God's word to the people. No, no, that will not do. I haven't told you yet how God first spoke to me, have I? It was on a day early in spring. I was a young man then, and because my father was a priest, I had learned to love the Lord God very much. Jeremiah? What? Who's there? The Lord your God, Jeremiah. I want you to be my prophet. To go to my people and tell them that I am angry with their evil ways. But Lord, I, I'm too young. I, I, I do not know how to speak to people. Do not say that, Jeremiah. For I will put my words in your mouth. Unless my people hear these words and love me once more in their hearts, they will be destroyed. And then I felt the hand of the Lord touch my lips, and I knew, Barak, that I must always speak for him. I understand, Jeremiah. I will never try to stop you again.
Why do you come to the temple? Why do you pretend to worship the Lord when you do not love him in your hearts? Because you sin against him, because you steal and murder and worship the false god Baal, the Lord will bring punishment upon you. Right now, armies from the north are marching on Jerusalem. They will burn this city and take you prisoner. Oh, did you ever hear it? The Lord God has told me this. It is the truth. You shall be punished. Do not believe him. He is no prophet of God. We are God's prophets. And we tell you that there is no danger. God would never let anyone burn his house of worship, his holy temple. The temple, the temple, the temple. That is all you think of. That in the valley of Ben Hinnom, where you sacrifice and burn incense to Baal. Baal is alive! And the temple does not matter to the Lord God. You must make a temple for him in your hearts. Love God there first. For surely punishment is coming. Yes, Jeremiah! Punishment for you! Here come the princes! Yes, let the princes judge Jeremiah! You may do what you want with me. Only know this. You will put innocent blood on your hands. I was sent by the Lord God. Princes! Great princes of Jerusalem! Before the people believe this lie, before they turn against us, their priests, and you, their rulers, before they turn against our holy temple of worship, put this man to death! Yes, yes. Put him to death! And that the Lord God has sent you. The other princes will speak to the people. But it is best that you get out of here quickly and never preach in the temple again. But I must, I must preach. If you would do the Lord's work, Jeremiah, you must first stay alive. Jeremiah, God's prophet, had preached to the people of Jerusalem. He warned them that the Lord was going to punish them for their sins, that because they worshipped the false god Baal, armies of strangers would come out of the north and capture their city. The people did not believe Jeremiah, and some of them even wanted him killed. But in the years that followed, the city was invaded by strangers, the Babylonians, and many of the people were captured. Then the Lord God sent Jeremiah on a strange mission to the potter's shop. Uh, oh, good day to you, sir. Uh, what may I do for you? Just keep working. I like to watch. Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. That's how it was in the old days, before the Babylonian armies captured our city. People used to come up and watch me make my pots. I enjoyed the company. Oh, be careful there. The edge of that pot is breaking. Oh, oh uh, yes. Well, that's not my fault. Some of the clay is like that. Just won't do what I want it to do. Well, I'll smash this one and squeeze it down again. No. Uh, no, I, I'll buy that one from you. Well, but, sir, it's cracked. Oh, well, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'll fire it for you right away. Listen to me, people of Jerusalem. Listen to my words. For they come from the Lord our God. The Lord God has spoken to me about this valley. If you continue to burn sacrifices here, to pray to Baal instead of to the one true God, the Lord will bring evil upon this place. You lie, prophets. We go to the temple. We sacrifice to God. Yes, we, do. we are still his chosen people. Why should he then destroy us? The Lord God told you that you should have no other gods before him. No Baal. No Baal. You see this part? It has a crack in it. It is not perfect. But the man who made the pot is not to blame. Because the clay would not mold to the potter's plan, it must be destroyed. 
You are like this pot, people of Jerusalem. You are not perfect. You do not obey the Lord. Because of that, he will destroy you all. No, prophet, we will destroy you. See him. Take him to the priest. Take him to the You again, eh? Well, I have a special place for you this time, Jeremiah. A place where you cannot escape. There. That's all right, Now, you had better have one last conversation with God while we talk over what shall be done with you. I know what shall be done, Pasha. I shall be freed. My God is with me and will not let me die. For your sake, prophet of God, I hope so. The people of Jerusalem were sinning against the Lord God. They had built altars to the false god Baal and worshipped him. They were liars and murderers and thieves. But the Lord God still loved his people, and he told the prophet Jeremiah to preach to them, saying that God would not punish them if they would learn to do good again. The people didn't listen, and some of them even tried to kill Jeremiah. So when armies of soldiers came out of the land of Babylon, God didn't stop them, and the city of Jerusalem was captured. What we need is a leader. Yeah, someone to organize an army that can fight. Well, there's always King Zedekiah. A weakling. <laughs> he couldn't organize a dogfight. <laughs> How about Jeremiah? He's the one that warned us about the Babylonians. Maybe he can see into the future and tell us what to do. A real fortune teller. <laughs> Yeah, it's all his fault that we're in this mess. He's a spy for the king of Babylon. But some say that he's a prophet of God. I'll tell the world what I think of the prophet, prophet Jeremiah. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, 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 did you see? Messengers from the other kingdom. Messengers to join their troops and ours in war. They're going to the palace. Hey, you, go tell the others. Yes, let's follow them. We'll meet you there right away. Oh, Barak. How much like these spoiled figs our people are. Will they never listen to reason? You have tried, Jeremiah. What more can you do? I can keep trying. Come. The crowd outside calls for war. You may count on our help, Your Majesty. The King of Moab has pledged all of his forces to fight the Babylonians, to save your city. Oh, Jeremiah, did how did you get into my chambers? This is supposed to be a secret meeting. Secret King Zedekiah. But it is no secret that the King of Babylon is this minute marching on our city. <gasps> we will stop him, Prophet. Don't worry about that. No, you must not stop him. You must surrender to him as God wants you to. Wear the yoke of slavery to Babylon for a while as punishment for your sin. Don't listen to him, King Zedekiah. He's a fool. An old fool. Have him arrested by your guards. Guards? Guards? Seize the prophets. Come here, you. Listen to me. The word of your God, I speak the... The word of your God. Surrender to Babylon. Wear the yoke of slavery for your God. Chosen people, God, we know that you heard about it. Fools, prophet. Liar. Do not listen to him, people of Jerusalem. Listen to me. I am your prophet. We will fight the Babylonians. We will break the yoke of slavery. Yes, you say. Break the yoke in pieces just... Like that. Oh, yes, you see that. We are strong and brave. We are God's own children, and He will save us. Amen. I say amen to that. Oh, that the Lord God would do this for us. Oh, 
It will not be. Unless you surrender to Babylon, you will die, and the city will be destroyed. I pray God's mercy on all of you, for surely you are doomed. The people of Jerusalem had sinned against the Lord God by worshiping the false god Baal. So when an army from the kingdom of Babylon attacked the city, God was too angry with his people to help them. Many were killed. Many were taken as slaves into the land of Babylon. And those who were left in Jerusalem were slowly dying of hunger. God's prophet Jeremiah told the people that the Lord God would spare their lives if they would only surrender to the enemy. But the people would not listen, and the war went on. Zedekiah, king in Jerusalem, was worried. Do you see them yet, Ebed Milik? No, sire, not yet. It is taking them longer than I thought. Oh, wait, here they come. Ah. Jehuchel and Zephaniah, the priests, to see your majesty. Well, what did you say? We asked the prophet. Jeremiah to pray for us, your majesty, just as you asked. And we asked him to tell us what we should do about the war. And what did he say? The same as always, surrender. He said that even if all of our enemies were wounded and dying, they would rise up from their beds and kill us all. But he said he would pray for us and ask God to help us. When you left him, he was praying, wasn't he? Mm, well, not exactly, your majesty. We had him... Arrested, Your Majesty. Arrested? For what? He's a spy for the enemy. He only wants us to surrender so he can rule over us. Get out! Get out! Yes, I don't know what to believe anymore. Just leave me alone! Go down to the dungeon, Ebed Milik. Bring the prophet to me. Jeremiah. Do you still tell the people to surrender? God tells the people to surrender, Your Majesty. Jeremiah, the princes who arrested you, I do not have power over them. I cannot free you. But I will have you move to the courtyard. There, at least, you may see the sunshine and still be safe from those who hate you. Will you try to pray for us again? King Zedekiah, I have never stopped praying. Mm -hmm. Look, there he is, praying, no doubt, praying for our enemies. Wait, do you see what I see there in the shadow? Well? Oh, <laughs> yes, a good idea, Jungle. They wouldn't find him until tomorrow. A tragic accident. <laughs> <laughs> tragic for Jeremiah. Very <laughs> quietly. Well done, my friends. Another soul to see it happen. Prophet Jeremiah. Please, please help me. Are you hurt? Can you hang on to this? I can. Hang on. All right. I'll pull you up. Now hold on. Don't let go. <sighs> the Lord will be good to you, he bit me. Will the Lord be good to Jehuchel and the others? The ones who tried to kill you? No. No, the Lord will not be good to them at all. They will not listen to me, Ebed Melek. My own people will not listen. And they will be destroyed. The city of Jerusalem was being destroyed. The people had sinned by worshipping the false god Baal. And although the prophet Jeremiah warned them that God would surely punish them, they would not listen. Armies from the kingdom of Babylon invaded the city and captured it. But Jeremiah still loved his people, and he wept for them. If only they had listened to me, Barak. If only they had believed that I was speaking the words that the Lord told me to speak. I know, Jeremiah, but our people are proud. 
They could not surrender as the Lord wanted them to. Jeremiah! It's Jeremiah! The prophet is alive! The prophet is alive! Come and see the prophet! Come and see Jeremiah! We will all die, pray for us. Ask God what we should do, Jeremiah! There is no need to ask! I know what to do! Quiet, quiet, everyone! Hear the prophet speak! God caused the Babylonians to invade our land because we needed to be punished for our sins. No wonder the Lord was angry. Now we must surrender to the king of Babylon. We must stay here in this land and rebuild it while he rules over us. No, the war must go on. We've had enough of war. We want to go where there is no war, where our children may have enough to eat. And where they won't hear the sounds of battle and the cries of the wounded and dying. Egypt. We could go to Egypt. Egypt. Yes, Egypt. Yes, Egypt. Yes, Egypt. Go to Egypt. 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 No, you say that you believe in the Lord God. Then trust him. Stay here as he asks. The prophet is crazy. Oh, come. Come, everyone. Let us gather what little we have left in our houses and go into Egypt. Yes, yes. let us go into Egypt. Let us go into Egypt. Let us go into Egypt. I will stay with you, Jeremiah. No, Barak. You are kind. But I must go where my people are. I still love them. Look. Look at this, you people of Jerusalem. The palace of the king of Egypt. Thank you, Rose. It's a beautiful palace. Yes, it has beauty. But look at these stones. Over these stones, the king of Babylon will place his throne. No, no. Yes, that same king who destroyed our city of Jerusalem will take this one, too. Prophet, it is time to tell you that we have talked together. We want you to know that we see now that it was our fault that our city was burned and our families killed. At last, oh Lord God, they understand. They see your power now. No. No, we have been fooled, Jeremiah. It was not the Lord God who punished us, but Baal. We stopped our sacrifices to Baal, and we were destroyed. No, you did not stop worshiping Baal in your hearts. In your hearts, you did not love the Lord God. We stopped our worship of Baal, and we were attacked. And now we will sacrifice to Baal again. We will burn offerings to Baal, just as we did before you stopped us. We will pray to him and worship him only in our hearts. What do you say to this, prophet of God? There is nothing to say but that which I have been saying all of these years. Just as it was in Jerusalem, when you turned from the Lord God, so shall it be in Egypt. You shall be destroyed. Be sure to watch the next chapter of Great Bible Stories. Chapter 1. Esther. Esther! Oh, where are you? Oh, Cousin Mordecai. Esther, the king has commanded that all the beautiful girls in the land of Persia be brought before him, that he may choose a new queen. Oh, that's wonderful. A new beautiful queen. Oh, but why should that upset you? Why should that... Well, the king's soldiers just might take you. <laughs> you joke, cousin. I do not joke. You are beautiful. <laughs> and you are very kind. Oh, but even if I were the most beautiful, I'm a Jew cousin, just as you are. And I don't think the king would want a Jewish girl for his queen. What's the matter? Thousands of our people have been in the land of Persia for many years. Yes, I know. 
Uncle, but what... Oh, it is true that our lives have been easier the last few years. The king has been kind to us. But think... Think what? Think what it could mean for our people if the new queen of Persia is a Jew, one of our own. Such a queen could do much for her people. Well, it's a, a very nice dream, Mordecai. Yes? We're the king's soldiers. What is it you wish? She is beautiful. We were told the truth. The truth? Yes, the people in your neighborhood told us how beautiful Esther, uh, Esther was. I see they didn't lie. I do believe the king will be pleased to see you, Esther, whether he chooses you for his queen or not. Mordecai. It's all right, Esther. But what if I'm chosen? And that you may be. But do not tell the king you are a Jew. Don't tell anyone. Not yet. All right. I won't tell. Well, come along, Esther. May I just get some of my clothes? No, no need. The king has provided beautiful new clothes for all the girls who will stand before him. For 12 months, the girls who had been gathered from all of Persia were prepared to stand before King Ahasuerus. Each one of them had to be ready to be queen, no matter who was chosen. Then finally, one by one, they stood before the king. You know, Haggai, all the girls you've brought here are quite delightful. Most of them are exceptionally pretty. Uh, but none of them stands out as the one to be queen. Uh, perhaps the king would rather wait until tomorrow before he sees any more. Mm, I'll see a few more. Then I shall have my supper. Her face, a guy. Look at her face. She's truly more beautiful than all the rest. What's her name? Esther, sire. Esther. Esther. You may rise, girl. I'm told your name is Esther. Yes, Your Majesty. Lovely voice. Tell me, Esther. Would you like to be queen of Persia? Surely this is the dream of every woman, sire. And you? Is it your dream? Whatever is the desire of my king, that I will do. Of course, of course. The guy. Yes, sire. She is the one. Oh, yes, sir. The queen's crown will rest on your head, my dear. Queen Esther. Think what it could mean to our people if the new queen of Persia is a Jew, one of our own. Such a queen could do much for her people. A new queen had been chosen for Persia. Her name was Esther. Esther was chosen from thousands of beautiful girls. And when the king's soldiers came to take Esther to the palace, Mordecai, her uncle, told her not to tell anyone that she was a Jew. She was most pleased to be queen. But Mordecai didn't see Esther anymore. It was against the law for the queen to leave her part of the palace. Day after day, Mordecai sat by the gate of the palace. One day, Mordecai sent a message to Queen Esther, and she immediately told the king. It's, it's from the man called Mordecai. Two of your men are planning to kill you. What? Yes, tonight. Did he give their names? Yes. You must tell me. They must be stopped. Oh, of course, but I do not enjoy speaking the death sentence for anyone. But their names? Tirish and Big Ten. Guards! Find Tirish and Big Ten immediately and have them hanged. Yes, sire. There must be no mistake. Hang them within the hour, or it shall be you who are hanged. Esther, you have pleased me again. My queen has saved my life. I only told you the message of Mordecai, your servant. Mordecai? Yes, Mordecai. His name will be written in the history of my kingdom. Then one day, the king appointed a new prime minister to be over all the princes in the land of Persia. He had great authority and power. His name was Haman. Haman was extremely proud, and he wanted everyone to honor him. 
All King Ahasuerus' servants and princes bowed down as Haman went by. All but Mordecai. Mordecai would not bow down to anyone but God. Haman did not know that Mordecai had saved the king's life. No, did you see that? Mordecai did not bow. I saw. I saw very clearly. Do you wish Mordecai taken to the gallows and hanged? Hanging would be good enough for him. He's not Persian, you not know. Not Persian? What is he? A Jew. Shall we hang him? No. No, I will not kill Mordecai. I will kill his people. His people? Yes, the Jews. If they suffer, I'm certain it will cause Mordecai much more pain than if I were to hang him this instant. Good. What is it that you wish, Hannon, that is important enough to disturb my afternoon snack? I'm sorry, Your Grace, but the matter I bring is important to Your Majesty's entire kingdom. Mm, say on. It has come to my attention that there is a certain people scattered among our own people in all the provinces of your kingdom. Well, what about them? They are extremely troublesome and evil. Well, well what have you in mind, Hannon? If it please the king... Let it be ordered that every one of them be destroyed. Mm. If this is done, I can assure you, sire, that your treasuries will make a profit of ten million in silver. Mm, you make good sense, Haman. Write the order, and here... Here is my signet ring, with which you shall stamp the order so that all my provinces will obey completely. And Haman... Yes, sir. You may have the money. Your servant. To all the princes and governors of Persia, on the 13th day of the 12th month, you shall kill all the Jews in your province, and you shall take all their wealth. There. No one will disobey the seal of the king. Haman ordered hundreds of the king's horsemen to ride to all of Persia to deliver the message. Great fear came to the Jews as they learned of Haman's order. Can anything save us from this death? Would God allow this to happen to us? I cannot believe that he will let us die. Thousands of God's chosen people, the Jews, were in the ancient land of Persia. One of the Jews, named Mordecai, would not bow down to Haman, the new prime minister of all Persia. So Haman decided to kill every Jew in the kingdom. Haman didn't know that Esther, queen of Persia, was a Jew. And he didn't know that Mordecai was the queen's cousin. When Mordecai heard his people were to be killed, he sat in the square of the capital city. Mordecai wore old clothing and covered himself with ashes to show how sad he was. What has Haman done to the people of Israel? What has he done? One of Esther's maids who knew Mordecai came and told Esther. Your Majesty, did you know that Mordecai is dressed in sackcloth and ashes? And sitting in the city square where everybody can see him. What is he doing there? Well, there was so much noise, I couldn't hear exactly what he said. But it sounded terrible, and it had something to do with the Jews. The Jews? Yes. Well, send some good clothing to him and, and ask him to change. What has he done to the people of Israel? Mordecai, what please. has he done? He has chosen to kill The queen all. has sent me to you, Mordecai. She wants you to stop all of this, to change he your clothes. Haman will kill Do all you the hear Jews. me? Yes, I hear you. But I want no clothing from the queen. But the queen what wants you to Haman stop. What has done to the people of Israel? Oh, you're Israel impossible. I'm sorry, Queen Esther. He would not take the clothing. He just sat there in all that filth and kept on wailing. I was so embarrassed. People kept looking at me and laughing. All right. You tried. Thank you. I will send Haytack this time. You are most kind. What has Haman done Mordecai. to Mordecai. Mordecai, you must listen to me. Mordecai, I am from the Queen. You have come with more clothes? No. The queen wants to know why you're doing this. She does not know. Would I have come if she knew? I am truly amazed. Will you tell me so I can give her an answer? Just tell the queen, the king's prime minister, Haman, has ordered the Jews of Persia to be killed and their possessions taken away. And remember, tell her it was Haman who ordered our death. Oh, this is terrible. 
How could the king allow such an order? There is more. More? Yes, and it concerns you. Yes? Mordecai wants you to bring the matter before the king and beg him to stop Haman's order. Oh, but, Haytack, you must tell Mordecai that any man or woman who goes to the king without being called to him will die. Unless the king holds out his golden scepter to welcome them. Will Mordecai have me risk my life? Haytack went to Mordecai. When Mordecai heard Esther's reply, he wrote her a note. Esther, remember you are also a Jew. Do not think for a moment that just, just because, because you are in the king's palace, you will escape. You will die along with all the other Jews. Think, Esther. Perhaps you were made queen of Persia for such a moment as this, to save your people. Do you wish to answer him, Your Majesty? Yes. Yes, I will answer. Tell Mordecai to have all of our people pray for me. In three days, I will go to the king. Your Majesty, please do not go to the king. Isn't there some other way? I must go for my people. And if I die, I die. The Jews in Persia had been sentenced to death. The wicked Prime Minister Haman ordered them killed because one of the Jews named Mordecai would not bow down to him. But Haman didn't know that Esther, queen of all Persia, was Mordecai's cousin and a Jew. When Esther heard of Haman's order, she knew she must go before the king and plead for her people even though it was against the law to go into the king's inner court without being invited, and could mean her death. <gasps> Did you send for someone, sire? No, I sent for no one. Who would dare to? Esther. Y yes, sire. It is good to see you. Welcome. Thank you, sire. What do you wish? I would like to tell you now, sire, but... but Well? If it please the king, let the king and Haman come to a special meal I have prepared, and then I will make my request. Certainly I will come. Am I so afraid? What will the king say when he knows I am a Jew? But I must help my people. Oh, I pray for the right words. The king sent a messenger to Haman's home, inviting him to dine at the palace. How wonderful! Yes, but I must say I could enjoy it more if it weren't for that pest Mordecai. First he wouldn't bow to me, and now he sits in the city square wailing about the Jews. Really, Haman? Why don't you rid yourself of Mordecai? You could do it quietly. Or I could have him killed in the courtyard so everyone can see what happens to those who do not honor Haman. Yes, yes. I shall build for Mordecai the highest gallows in Persia. Seventy-five feet high. It will be beautiful. That night, while Haman was having the gallows built, the king was restless and couldn't sleep. He called the court historian who wrote down in a giant book all the things that happened in Persia. The king hoped that if the historian read to him, it might help him fall asleep. And it was on that day the life of the king was threatened, and the king's servant Mordecai sent word to the king of the foul plot, and thereby saved the king's life. What honor was given to Mordecai for his good deed? Uh, none, your grace. Nothing at all? Mm. How terrible. Send for Haman. Yes, sir. Your Majesty. Haman, what do you think should be done for the man the king wishes to honor? You must want to honor me. Haman. Uh, oh, uh, yes, yes, sire. Well, I would say, place upon the man you wish to honor the royal robes which only the king has worn. Good. And let the man ride the horse which only the king has ridden, and let the king's most noble prince lead the royal horse carrying the honored man through the main streets of Susa. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Prepare everything, and you, good Haman, you do all you have said yes. to Mordecai. Mordecai? You said Mordecai. 
He once saved my life, Haman, and I didn't reward him. And I wanted to hang Mordecai. And you can tell me all about what you have done for Mordecai tomorrow when we have dinner with the Queen. Yes, all about it. Good night, sire. Good night. Yes, good night, Haman. And rest well. The Jews in Persia had been sentenced to death. The wicked Prime Minister Haman ordered them killed because one of the Jews, named Mordecai, would not bow down to him. But Haman didn't know that Esther, queen of all Persia, was Mordecai's cousin and a Jew. When Esther heard of Haman's order, she knew she must go to the king and plead for her people. She invited the king and Haman to a special meal. Haman was pleased to dine with the king and queen. But one thing spoiled it for him. The king had ordered Haman to honor Mordecai for saving the king's life. Ah, such pleasure, my dear. Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. A meal fit for a king. <laughs> I am truly puffed up with the food, you see. <laughs> oh, Haman, how did it go with Mordecai? Oh, I dressed him in the royal robes as you ordered. Good. I placed him upon your horse and led the horse through the streets. And you shouted? I shouted. Mordecai is the man the king desires to honor. Great is Mordecai in the eyes of the king. Beautiful, beautiful. God, God, bring Mordecai to me. I wish to see him wearing the royal robe. I have not forgotten about you, my dear. Now, no more secrets, Esther. What is your request? Your Majesty, if I have pleased you at all... Yes, yes. If I have pleased you at all, I ask that you spare my life and the lives of my people. What? We are to be destroyed, killed. Killed? Are you joking? Is this a game? Oh, it is all true, sire. Then who is to blame for this? Who would lay a hand on my queen? Where is he? Haman. Haman? Haman has done this. What but the... My order to kill the Jews. Haman. I, I, I didn't know that Queen was a Jew, sire. You swine. Oh, sire. You pig. Sire, I you enemy of the throne. Sire. Uh, and I didn't even ask what people you wanted to kill. Good Queen Esther, I know you will forgive me. How dare you touch the Queen? Guards, take this man. He is a traitor. Then perhaps your highness could find use for the gallows Haman has prepared for Mordecai. For Mordecai? Mordecai saved my life. Oh. Take Haman and hang him from his own gallows. You. It is all because of you. It is because of you, Haman. You have brought this on yourself. Oh, cousin Mordecai. Oh, then Mordecai is also a Jew. Yes, sire. And would have suffered because of Haman. But now it is finished. But what of the rest of my people? Haman's order to destroy them still stands. You and Mordecai shall write another order which will help save your people. Thank you, Thank sire. You. It uh, shall be done immediately. And command my fastest riders to carry the new order to all of Persia. You did well, Esther. It was you who saved our people. Thank God you were chosen to be queen of Persia. Oh, it is a happy time, Mordecai. And in all the years to come, our people will celebrate the day we were saved from the sword of Haman. Be sure to watch the next chapter of Great Bible Stories. <laughs>